think everything's working. Uh, hopefully my mic's not peaking too much as well. I know I've got it off to the side a little bit, but uh, all right. So I'll wait for people to follow in. I did schedule this for about 20 minutes from now, so don't expect many people to start off. I'll maybe do some posts out. See if we can draw some more people in. Let's see. <laughs> no, I did get it right. Oh, damn. It's amazing to see Alex can get nine grades. Hey, Pathogen, thanks for coming in. And um, thanks for the follow six hours ago. I just noticed on my thing. Phoenix Senpai Hype. Yep, so I'll be just calling him. And one thing to note about this um, this discussion is... Uh, nothing is scripted, nothing is like set in a formula, it's not like I've sat down with Matt and gone, alright, we're going to talk about this, 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 and this, and this, um, this is literally going to be me, it's like, it, it's like calling up an old friend and catching up and seeing what they've been up to, because, um, I think I haven't been in a voice call, like a proper one-to-one -one call with Matt in probably about eight years, which is crazy to think about. And I actually mentioned that to him when I approached him about this. I said, you know, we haven't spoken properly like in eight plus years. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was like, dude, why don't we just sit down and have a talk? And, you know, obviously it, it doesn't need to be all purely 2DX stuff, but just, you know, like sit down and chat. Uh, you can probably hear my dog going crazy in the background as well. Um, she should hopefully calm down. I, I sat with her for a little bit. So, yeah, hopefully she's alright by the time that it starts. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm genuinely curious to see what's changed, because even though... <laughs> yeah, that blue cable, huh? Um, even though I've sort of spoken to Matt from time to time, uh, you know, like via messages, uh, we haven't actually sat down and talked about, you know, the 2DX side of things, or where he's at, or what's moving forward, etc. So I figured after that video that I made the other day, just going over where I'm at and sort of how I'm sitting with the game, you know, what's the flip side of that? Like what what's going on in the head or in the, the life spit of someone who's gone super hard for the last eight years, you know? Um, and Siggy, it's been a while seeing you on Twitch. Yeah, it has been a long while, hasn't it? Um, yeah, I've... I, I sort of moved across back to Twitch. I'll see if I can move this cable, like, down the back. There we go. That's a bit better. Um, I, yeah, sort of wound up back on Twitch because YouTube was being a pain in the ass to send out. Twitch has really, really sort of done a lot of good work on, you know, how it, how it's um, connected with everything and how easy it is to send stuff out, especially with stuff like Streamlabs nowadays where you can literally just press one button and it does it all for you. Man, the dog is going crazy. I hope you guys can't hear that. But, um, yeah, so I've decided to sort of move back. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, GG Snipes, I need to go to Chemist Warehouse, actually. I forgot to, <laughs> forgot to pick up one of my prescriptions earlier in the week. Um, we can hear the dog. Yeah, unfortunately, she's, she's very sad. Uh, usually she's out of the pen running around, but, um... Yeah, no, I've left her in the pen just so that we can do this interview. So she's only really been out for like 20 minutes at the moment. Uh, once we're done with this interview, I'll probably take her out for a walk. <laughs> yeah, no, I can hear it through the headphones, which is crazy. 
Um, so we're just waiting for Matt to sort of get himself ready. Um, I said to him, just let me know when you're good to go and, and we'll kick things off from there. Uh, I've got a layout set up. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> but we'll see once we get to the call. Um, while we are waiting as well, and, uh, you know, while we're listening to my dog carry on like a little baby, um, I did want to thank a lot of people for all the responses I got on that video. Like, honestly... It was a spur of the moment thing where I sort of said, okay, I'll, I'll put out that video and just sort of share my opinions and thoughts because I was just sitting there uh, going, oh, this, this is a video I should have made a while ago, but never really got around to doing. Um, but yeah, the, the responses to that were massive. Like the fact that so many people came on and like resonated with what I said and also just sort of found something similar or connected with what I'd put out there was was really well one it was sort of reassuring to see that I'm not the only person in that boat feeling that way but uh also the fact that you know people actually got something out of that video because uh one of the big things with the content that I was putting out at the time like back in the days was you know I put out stuff for people to sort of get something out of and uh, to hear that people still to this day are using stuff on my YouTube channel is like insane to think about. To, to think that the videos that I put out almost 10 years ago are still relevant to some people is, is crazy. But um, yeah, after that video and after all of the responses, I just sort of thought, well, you know, may as well keep riding the momentum, may as well try and do something with this because... Obviously, there's still people that are out there that want to listen to what I'm saying and listen to, uh, you know, some of the stuff that people have to put out there. Um, and yeah, I figured why not use that and catch up with Matt? Because th there's been so many times where I'm like, dude, we should just sit down and just like talk 2DX. Like really, really just sit down and talk 2DX. We haven't done that in so long. And you know, that, like, if I look through messages with him at the moment, because it's not on stream, it's like, yeah, we should probably do something at some point, you know, oh, it'd be pretty cool to talk about this and that, and, you know, we sort of had a chat, but, like, nothing ever, ever came of it, and that's solely because I've been, like, super duper lazy, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm really, really grateful that Matt's accepted to do this today, and as I said, it's, it's not a planned thing, it's just sort of off the cuff, um, he's just given me the okay to make the call, um, I'm gonna shoot him a video call and see if he's ready and fingers crossed this um this layout actually works i don't know if it's gonna work or not but all right here we go let's give him the call and hopefully we see hey there he is hey man i can't see you you can't see me? I don't know why I can't see you. Uh, probably uh, because my video's on the stream, um, and I have uh, not centered you very well in this, uh, in this layout. Let me, let me get you a bit more centered into your, your frame there. Yeah. I, my I, bad. I, my bad. But, uh, hey man. Yeah. Hey. Long, long time. No chat. How are you doing? I am doing pretty good, honestly. Pretty good. Pretty good? Can I ask you real quick, what is your Twitch channel? Uh, it's Darks with three S's, because my original channel kind of disappeared into the ether, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I tried Perfect. to recover it. It's a funny story, actually, because, you know, I've already got a pretty good following on that base channel, the, what was it, 2DX Darks channel. Yeah. And I was like, alright, I'll try and revive that. Could not recover it. Like, I went through every single, like, avenue to try and recover that, and it just, it never happened. Right? Like, I, I just could not get the damn thing to recover. So, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, you won't be able to see me. Um, hopefully... You look on stream or something? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, I'm showing up on my stream, but yeah, um, it's kind of annoying that it's not showing up. I'll see if I can fix my video on here. I don't know if I can't use the same... Yeah, it should be using... I, I guess you can't use the same camera across two different things, because I've got it on the, the stream as well. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, no dramas. So, um, yeah, man, let's 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 catch up. Hey, what have you been up to? Man, I've been uh, I've been just honestly just working. Working. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been working and like two DX. So like, for a while, my work schedule was uh, like twelve thirty p.m. to nine. So then I would just like come home and well actually because of covid 
right? Uh, I would just come home and do whatever the hell. I have Infinitas running on my cab, of course, so I, gr I grinded Infinitas for a while. Other than that, I've just been playing a lot of other games, too, so... Yeah? What you, what you been playing <laughs> at the moment? What sort of stuff have you been playing? Uh, so, I've been playing... I, I know Derek's in chat here. Yeah. Uh, I've put about 1,800 hours into this game called Escape from Tarkov. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> for I do the past, say it, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for the past, like... Basically, for the entirety of COVID that I've been stuck in my house, like... That was almost 100% of my free time when I wasn't playing 2DX. So. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's crazy. Um, yeah, because I, I saw you were playing it a lot. Is it like a... Is it a survival or is it... What, what is so it? It's a, it's a first-person shooter, but it's like ultra-realistic, right? So okay. there's it's like... There's all sorts of like realism components to it that like... Honestly, explaining it would take freaking forever. Yeah. But like... If you get shot, you might bleed, and if you bleed, like, light versus heavy, like, you have to use different meds to treat that. Uh, there's different, like, ammo types that either, like, do, like, a bunch of flesh damage versus armor damage. There's literally, like, a fucking picture of a table that is, like, two and a half screens, oh, God. like, big, that describes each ammo type and, like, how powerful it is and how much penetration it uses. It's like crazy. It literally, nuts. so literally, the two DX of FPS games. I'm not fucking joking. The, the, the amount <laughs> of depth is insane, yeah. and how much fucking shit you just have to know is stupid. And it does not hold your hand at all. You have to figure it all out by yourself. It, it reminds <laughs> me a lot of um, yeah. So during lockdown, I actually played a lot of Terraria. Actually, I picked up Terraria and played <laughs> through that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, same thing with that. Like the the depth of the crafting in Terraria. It's like, oh, what's this useless thing for? And then, you know, you, you open up the wiki, next thing you know, there's, like, 20 steps to craft something. Like... <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I played a bit of Terraria 2 in lockdown, but, like, honestly, like, a few days. Yeah. wasn't It wasn't a whole lot, but I, I am familiar, and, the, like, the tree yeah. is kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, man, it, it gets... It's absolutely insane. So I, I get the hook man. of uh, when you yeah. get the complicated to play. But, oh uh, my god. Yeah, so, look, what I thought... We do, because there's no point in doing, like, you know, an interview sort of thing while we're sitting and chatting. Um, I think that the one thing I want to ask, because uh, it's been, what, like, the last time... When was the interview? It was, like, 2012, 2013? When was the one that we I think did... it was... I think it was, like, 2014. 2014. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it blow your mind <laughs> that it's been seven years since we did that interview? Kind of, yeah, like... <laughs> God, I can't fucking believe it. Like, yeah, I still... That that whole, like, trip was still freaking crazy to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> the amount of things that that changed for me in the future is yeah. nuts, actually. <laughs> so, Cause that, man. That, that was a ride, not just for you, but for me as well. Like, physical, mental, emotional. Like, it, it was the whole works. Because, yeah, like... The amount of places that we went and the amount of stuff that we did... <laughs> just, yeah like holy shit that was probably one of the biggest trips that he did while I was in Japan like doing that 2DX bender with you it was literally like you know how people like go on alcohol benders <laughs> yeah, we, we, we wanted a freaking 2DX bender man that was nuts like how many different Dude, right. arcade, didn't we visit like 12 arcades in a day or something oh easily yeah for sure like <laughs> I remember going on like 2 Dare and just like going like basically like down a street and being like okay well we can go here and here and here and here we just like did all of that yeah that was uh that was sick i remember the time we got to that last arcade i forgot which one it was maybe it was ikebukuro um i, I was mm. so wrecked I was, like because you forget how physically <laughs> taxing 2dx is right so by the time you get right. to that last like, arcade oh i was knackered I, I i couldn't play properly i was like nah i'm done <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I remember that, like, fuck. That was, that was a time. <laughs> sure was. Sure was, Jesus man. Christ. Um, man. And, and you went back after that, didn't you? Like, how many times have you been since that trip? Four times. Well, three times since that trip. Four times total. Four times total. Damn so, man. yeah, that time I was there for, like, what, ten days, and I spent, like, a week in fucking Toyohashi, yeah. right? Most of the time was there, I think. Yeah, tell you what I think it was like thing. we did. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I I fucking miss that place honestly. Uh, yeah, after that, 
I went again like two years later for like three weeks. Yeah. And then uh, in 2019, I went for two months. Two months. Well, two months. And then I went again just before uh, just before COVID. 2020 New Year. So 20... Well, actually, hold up. No. So that was in 2017 that I went for two months. 2019, I went in uh, December for like New Year's. So I've been... I've been to Japan a few times now. <laughs> Funnily enough, I think you've probably spent much, as much time there as I've probably spent living there now, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> well, did you live there for like a year? It was a year and a bit, yeah, but... Yeah, probably... no, I was there for a year. <laughs> I was there for a year. Total. I mean, it's like, what, like, maybe if you yeah. add it all up, I think it's about three and a half to four months, so it's like... It's still a long time. All right. That's a super long time. Damn. Yeah. No, it definitely um, is. Because I, I haven't spoken to you about your trips um to japan because yeah I, I i know that like a ton of stuff happened in each trip um do you want to just give me like some snapshots i want to know like what oh happened my god in each one oh. so, so let's go from from trip two down to trip four tell me the highlights oh um, okay let me let me think about what happened in japan <laughs> six years ago five years ago uh, it? yeah it's crazy yeah god i think so the the second trip that I went to that where I was there for three weeks. Yeah. Uh I think I spent most of my time in Tokyo. Yeah. And I actually traveled. I traveled up north to uh Akita. Yeah. So that it was like a, this mountain town. We yeah. have friends that live there. And uh, we just went and visited. It was honestly like a beautiful freaking place. Like it's basically surrounded by mountains the entire time. It was like not quite snowing. But it was like almost there. It snowed like the day after we left. We were really sad because we wanted to see the snow. Yeah. But uh, and thank you, Derek. Uh, Dolce Cup. That was when. Uh, okay, now it's all coming back. Now yeah. it's all coming back. So that trip was the time that I went. Wait, was it? No, it wasn't. That was the 2017 trip. This trip I went with Caesar. So yes, still went to Akita mm -hmm. and met met up with people. And I also went to Nagoya, I believe. Oh, yeah. So that's the most city, of my time Tokyo. city near Toyohashi. That's the other major city that's about narrow. Yeah, right that's now. like the major city like around Toyohashi and Aichi. Okay, so that, Akita like, and, and Nagoya, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of it. If I'm being honest, I don't recall exactly what happened because it's been so long. The <laughs> next trip, I think, is the hype yeah. because that was when... Uh, Derek and Emily came with me, mm. and I was there for two months. I'd stayed there with Justin, and Derek and Emily came for two weeks, I think, and that was when we went to the Dolce Cup. We went to, uh, Ikebukuro round one. That's right, I think I saw and... you, yeah, I, I saw you in the, um, the audience, like, during the yeah. stream, you know, they did the audience <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it's yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and the, the thing that I remember the most about that was, like, walking into, like, the crowded-ass arcade, and then, like, 1048, like, comes out of the crowd and literally spots me, he's like, you're fucking here, like, what the hell? And he had that moment of, like, oh, shit. And he actually came and talked to me for a bit, I'm like, okay, cool, so you do remember me. That's like... <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah, so that was... Yeah, that was, uh, Dolce Cup, uh... Mm. I believe at the time, uh... So this is 2017. I think that was when Shinna Buzz was new. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, the Cannonballers location test was happening on my birthday. Uh, decided not to go, and then it got canceled because someone like had a bomb threat or a knife threat or something. Oh, jeez. So okay. I was like, okay, cool. So good thing I didn't go to that shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I spent, uh, I spent a week in Saitama. Yeah, yeah. And traveled all over the place there, and... I met a uh, bull, the Sound Voltex top breaker. Yeah. So that was that was kind of neat. I literally watched him grind uh, illness for hours. He was trying to puck it. Oh, he never got it that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just... I remember like there was. Oh my god! There were so many times where like. So I, I don't know how much Sound Voltex you've played at least, or how familiar you are with illness, right? But basically. There's a part in the beginning that's, like, one of the hardest, like, obstacles to pucking. And if you got past that, 
then you were like, oh shit, I like have to watch this, right? And then there was like another section where if you got past that, you're like, oh shit, this is definitely gonna happen. And that happened like four or five times over the course of like two hours. And it was like every other run was just like immediate retry, retry, retry. And I'm just like, God, dude, how the fuck do you have the patience for this shit? <laughs> that's that's something which but, I do want to touch on a bit later, actually, um, when it yeah. comes to scoring, because it's it's something that you see a lot. But we'll keep going with the trip. So obviously, you saw Bowl. Um, I saw Bowl. Yeah. I met up with some of his friends too, other like bot people, I guess. Um, but then after that, I spent about a month in uh, Toyokawa. Yeah. So next to Toyohashi, mm. and uh, that was just sort of chill. I mean, it was like the uh, the countryside, right? So I was biking to an arcade. It was like 20, 25 minute bike ride. And uh Have you gone to Nova again? No, it was uh Toyota Wave. Wave. Oh yeah, Wave. Mm -hmm. The machines are alright. Yeah, they're, they're pretty They good were good. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was a fan. I was a fan. And like <laughs> the way that they were laid out, it was like sort of in this big, like wide open room, so the sound like didn't it wasn't really polluted by other shit going on. Yeah. Even though, and like, Sound Voltex was like right next to it at the time I played a lot of Sound Voltex too, so it was like, you could play Sound Voltex, and then you could play TDX, and like, it didn't really interact, it didn't interrupt, really, yeah. and I got to meet a lot more of the RIS people, you remember the, the RIS yeah, people, like RIS, RISK KK, yeah, RISK VN, yeah. RISK KK, and RISK CT, yeah, they're, all they're those all people. part of the, uh, the Toyo Taikai from 2014. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> holy shit, I fucking forgot about that, that was, that, that was like, that was so good. That was I know, that, that was an awesome tournament. I really My it. God. <laughs> um, was this the but, trip where you met a ton of rankers as well? Uh I met Saw. Mm. I think the most notable trip in terms of meeting rankers was probably the most recent run, but recent one. But that trip actually yeah. was uh when I first met Dolce. Mm. I met Dolce and Litched, and I had like a lunch with with them and with uh, Taisuke as like a translator. Oh damn! Man. And that was like, that was hype. He had some sort of a plan for like some U.S. event that ended up not happening. But like, it no was way. yeah. So he talked because like the whole so it was a planned lunch, right? And like the topic of the lunch was like. Basically, Dolce and Lich talking about, okay, well, if you think about 2DX and you think about, like, the growth of 2DX, right? In Japan, it's sort of reached, like, a saturation point, right? Mm. Because everybody who wants to play 2DX is going to play 2DX yeah, because yeah. they have tab access, right? So you're not really going to get many new players. And Lich said, like, more or less the same thing. So they're, like, the most likely, like, place for growth was the US because of the expansion of round one and they were talking about, you know, having some kind of like Dolce and round one event like in the US, no which way, ended up completely not happening. Yeah. So there there was like a lot of plans about that that I actually had to like stay quiet about, but it never happened. So Man, that's terrible. <laughs> and, and it's interesting that you're bringing it up because like I I'd heard sort of things here or there of oh Dolce is planning to expand and you know how he put out that video, that really cryptic one? Where it's like, yeah. I want to reach out globally to plays and stuff. I was like, oh shit, things are going to get high. Yeah, yeah. But then nothing happened. So <laughs> I, I, I heard like some like rumblings about before COVID happened that there was going to be some sort of tournament held at, I think specifically PHM, round one PHM, the round one next to me. Oh yeah. Uh, and like the winner of that would be like awarded like a KEC spot or something. I, that was like Fuck. a rumor. I don't know how true that is. I just remember hearing about it. Uh, obviously, it didn't happen. So, who, for, who freaking knows? So, but so what, what you're meaning to tell me was they were basically gonna give you a KSA spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of kind of kind of the gist. Um, fun fact, though, mm. I, I I think I firmly believe that that lunch that I had was like a big, uh, or Dol Dolce had mentioned. He said the one thing about tournaments that sucks ass for 2DX is that you have two people, they play the same song, and they don't get the same random. And he was like, wouldn't it be great if there was this mode where you could match with other people and they'd get the same random if they picked random? Oh, no way. I'm just fucking saying. 
I might have been there when the idea of arena came around. I'm just saying. It's... That's crazy, man. <laughs> that you're actually around when that, that happened. So you know, you, you were there at its conception. I was there. This I was guy, fucking there. This yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on Arena? Because you know, I I haven't touched Arena at all. It, it came out what in was it Cinnabuzz when it came out? It was Cannonballers. Oh, Cannonballs. Yeah, yeah. So I I like already hella retired by that point. Um, yeah. What do you What do you think about Arena? I fucking love it. It's the best addition to the game since like. I don't know, since, you know, not LCDs, right? Or not CRTs, rather. Or charge yeah. notes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, like, one of the best fucking additions to the game, for sure. Like, it's so hype. I love that I can match with people in Japan and, like, compete. It's just great. Like, and it makes tournaments, like, 20 times better like to watch oh, it's, it's amazing to watch kac now because you get all four people at the same time playing the same random like, yeah head to head you can see the scores so clearly yeah it's freaking awesome um mm -hmm. and can you use it like do people play it much in the states or do yeah. Folks on it? yeah 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 yeah. people people do play it uh at least like the people i go around one with like when when they're when it's an arena period like you know this week and last week and the week before mm -hmm. when we play arena uh I see a lot of random people playing Arena too. Oh, yeah, because so. obviously I, I I don't know anything about it. You know, I see rankers play it and I go, oh, yeah, that's cool. But I don't know how it works. So is it like, you know, a month season or two months? So it it's usually like two weeks. Only two weeks? It's usually, it's usually like a two-week Arena period. It happens, I think, anywhere from three to four times during a style, probably closer to four. Hmm. And uh, basically you're motivated to go play it because there's like unlocks that come around oh. right so like the more you play arena you get like arena cubes and these cubes add up and then you get like songs usually uh the trend is that you get uh, a legendaria chart a new legendaria chart which is either a revived cs black another or like a new chart that they've made or uh and then you get a uh like a i think it's a cs revival typically so it's late so. content it's basically just old black another old revival. i mean i don't know i don't know about you <laughs> I don't know about you, but, yeah. like, I don't mind having, like, Barum attack Black and Other in the oh, game now. Oh, you know. I mean, right. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes they release, like, hype shit, like, uh, like, Senen. Mm. Senen Legendary, I mean, rather. That's a really good 12. I, uh, I have, I've seen that chart once because Wisely posted a disgusting score for it. And I was like, what, what the fuck does that <laughs> chart look like? And then it's I just it. BMS. It's hype. Oh, it's, it's, it's a fucking it's, great chart. It's nuts. Like, I, I, when I first saw his score, I was like, Wisely, that's a shit score for Senen. And then you guys were like, no, man, it's Senen Legendaria. And I was like, okay, I'll yeah, have right. a look. And I was like, holy crap. Okay, yeah. That, oh, that's, my that's God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so you, it, there, we've gotten that. We've gotten, uh, honestly, Ganymede. I haven't played Ganymede Legendaria because playing Legendaria in, in America kind of blows. And, like, I have to do it on uh, Thursdays. And if I don't go on a Thursday, I don't get to play Legendaria unless I have, like, VIP black passes, which I kind of have a lot of. But, like, you know, it sucks to, like, not be able to sit there and grind the same yeah. song over and over if I want to score. Especially if it's hard. Uh, there's a lot, but a lot of good Legendarias, a lot of good unlocks. You, know, you see Rosher in there, she's talking about how, you know, JoJo came from Arena, <laughs> fucking OP31. The, the Alex Kim special, yes. Oh, boy. The Alex Kim <laughs> special and Rosher special. Yeah, but, well... So, I, don't, I mean, what do you think about some of those Black and Others? Because I did watch Ganymede, and I wanted to throw up. I was like, this is... I think Ganymede is hype. Yeah. I think that's sick. So, yeah, so, that's the flip really side, cool. I, so, the video I put out, like, a couple of days ago, Ganymede is one of those charts where I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, what happened? Really? Yeah. It's so, like, here's the... It's too... But it's straightforward. It's just 24ths. Yeah, it's just 24ths, but they're hard 24ths, yeah. man. For, for, okay, for yeah. someone like you... <laughs> Who's like the Zure Master, no problem, but for like Not a know. Zure Master. <laughs> <laughs> for a person like me, I'm, I'm just good. flailing, like, oh my god, what is this? Like I I barely triple A the normal chart. Like <laughs> look, look at the block. Like, okay, yeah, no, no way, man. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> man, you just gotta learn. It's not that bad. Stop so, Mari. That's that that's so, what that's what Wisely told me about noodles as well. Just you just have to try more noodle pattern. Dude, I mean, okay, so you're you're old school. I mean, I I feel yeah. like you can't even use the excuse of being old school because I'm also old school yeah. in a way. 
So, like, you just play charge note charts, and then it just makes sense. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just, just I don't know. follow, follow Derek's, uh, you know, Rhea Derek's old saying of just, just turn random one and play the fucking game. <laughs> exactly, right? Just play play the freaking game. Yeah. He wisely is old school. I'm sure he can hit charge notes. Isn't he good at diamond crossing? Oh, he's, he's the master of diamond crossing. Like, have you seen that guy play diamond crossing? He makes it look easy. <laughs> and it's not oh easy. Oh my god. Dude, shit's fun. Shit's oh. hype. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Arena's fucking sick, and the only thing that makes me sad is the fact that I live in California, and that if I wanted to match with people, that I have to match at, like, midnight, and then round one closes at two. So... Oh, fuck, man. That, that's... And then, usually, by then, I'm either, like, tired, too, because it's midnight, and, you know, you're playing 2DX when you're not it's, 100% it's awake, kind of Yeah, because it's midnight right now for you, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's 12-12. Yeah. So it's 12 a.m. in Cali. Yeah, for Japan, mm -hmm. it would be 3 p.m. or 4 p.m.? So ah, uh, four. Yeah, I so think. this is around the time where people are either like just becoming available, or you know, people will knock off work around this time, or you know, in about an hour or two. So you'd never match with them. Just yep. no, no so. fucking way. This is this is what they need to do, Matt. They just need to put Arena in an Infinitas, and I don't know why the fuck they haven't done this yet. I have been saying the same thing. I'm a little worried about. Mm them doing that because i feel like they're gonna charge you every time you go in <laughs> you, you know they're gonna do it that's the worst part it's like they then there's no way they're not going to capitalize on this shit or actually no there's One no way the, the thing is though i mean instead of <clears throat> infinitus taking why don't they just do a fucking season pass that'd be the smart thing to do like it'd be you know, high yeah like uh, we we basically gave remember how we sat down and we spoke about infinitas like, mm. here's 12 ideas that would make this game freaking amazing. They've implemented, like, half of them now, which is yeah. good. But, actually, how are you feeling about Infinitus? Because back at the time, we were sort of like, eh, it's all right, I guess. <laughs> what about now? Now it's really, I mean, now it's really good, like, 100%. Now it's, like, 100% worth the money, and, like, I've bought almost every song pack, and, like, it's just good. It's good practice, like. Yeah. You can't if you can't afford to go to the arcade. You should really be playing Infinitas if you want to play 2DX. In oh, yeah. my opinion, hundred percent because it's, it's 100%. the legit way of doing it. Of course, yeah. Um, one thing which a lot of people ask about, and I can't answer because I can't, I don't have access, is the discrepancy between Infinitas and AC. How much of a difference do you know? notice? Like in terms of play, yeah. Uh, well, I mean. I guess, like, kind of the same as before, right? Like, if you were playing on a setup at home versus, like, playing in the arcade, right? But, like, it just depends. Like, in my case, like, the biggest difference is, like, the monitor. Mm. So, because, I, I mean, I do have a 120 hertz monitor, but, like, it's not exactly the same as arcade. In my opinion, it's actually better because it goes less. Which I think is screwing me over a little bit, actually. <laughs> but uh, it's just like how close can you get your setup? Like if you yeah. if you're talking about like actual like raw like core gameplay, then like it's identical. Like the the timing isn't weird. It's it's the same. <laughs> Yeah. It's just how close can you get your setup, yeah. Okay, I'm going to widen you out a little bit because you're, um... <laughs> every time that you, like, go down oh. to think, you're, like, cutting your okay. head off. So, that's so right, I, can, just... I can move my camera, yeah, because I'm uh, looking entirely right. off of my fucking... So, by the way, like, if I'm <laughs> not right, looking at good. my camera I've sorted your when head, I talk... Good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because, like, it, I, I've, I've noticed that, like, obviously, because if I look straight like this, I'm looking at, like, a rotating screen of grey and not you. Yeah. And so if I, it's a lot less awkward for me to look this way. So if, if, I, if it's weird that I'm not making eye contact, that's no, no, why. No, it's good. It's good because the way that it's actually set up, I'm actually staring to my left, which on stream is making me look right. So it looks like we're actually facing yeah. each other and talking. Hey, so hi, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. I'll, I, I'll, I, I'll keep I, doing big, this. Big brain, man. Big brain. I already thought this out. So. <laughs> but yeah. Um, all right. Okay, so let's say for like the average person, let's say someone's got like a 28 inch monitor, like for example, me, like boomer player, 28 inch monitor, I'm using a Phoenix Blend controller, right? Okay. How similar or different is that going to feel roughly? Because I feel like the uh, discrepancy has been narrowed massively 
over the last seven years from, you know, Infinitus 1 to AC to now? Um, funnily enough, if, you, if you're specifying, like, the Phoenix one, yeah. I actually think, number one, I think that's, like, the best controller to get at the moment. If I didn't own a cab, I've ha- I would definitely oh, have two Phoenix ones. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why I say that is that the one time I tried this, I don't know if it's still true, but I actually felt like the dead zone on the turntable was very similar to that of a lightning cab. Mm-hmm. So I think that if you were to make the keys 50-50, uh, it would be a little bit hard to tell the difference. Like, obviously the lightning turntable will still be better, yeah. but it's not going to be that big of a discrepancy wow that's that yeah. that speaks volumes for that controller and dude like i bought one just on a whim because i was like oh, i wonder what it feels like like when i got back yeah. in the stream dude that, that's easily the best controller i've played on like yeah you'd think that there'd be some sort of like you know oh there's because you know how every time back when we were playing there was always a drawback to the controller there was something like not quite right like the the what is it? The RE was way too heavy, or you know, the the turntable sizing wasn't quite accurate. All those sorts of things. Man, I can't fault yeah. this controller. I genuinely can't. Yeah, I mean, like, it's honestly just so good, and it's like half the price of a of a platinum edition. So yeah. it's like, why would you? Why ever, spend the money? Yeah, why would you ever get a PE when you can get something that just like it, it's the the whole package, so to speak. Um, I really wish that it was an option earlier, for yeah. sure. Um, one thing that wisely pointed out a while ago and he's mentioned now actually in chat is that the turntable material for the phoenix one is better than the, apparently the lightning cab material do you agree with that i would agree with that yeah yeah i think uh the lightning cab like grip is really shitty like super bad how's it shitty? like, like I, i'm curious because i've never so it. i don't have a huge problem of like my hand sweating Mm. but I still slip on that turntable sometimes. <laughs> uh, hmm. I know that I know other people that do have a lot more issues with like their hand sweating and like normal, like my cabs, like turntable grip isn't good enough. And lightning is like half of that grip, in my opinion. So Yikes. from what I remember of the Phoenix one, uh, grip it's, well, first off, there's not really, like, actual grip on it, I think. No, no, no. no just, like, just, the actual fucking material. It's just the material, material itself. Yeah, the material's so yeah. grippy. Yeah. It, it yeah, exactly. Me, remember that cabinet that Yusuke took us to with the really grippy, like, gloss turntable? Yes. It's similar to that. Where it's... The, just the material itself is very grippy because it's glossy. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. No, because th- that turntable cover, it's very similar to the feel of the... Oh, you... I, you haven't played on the KPC, but the KPC's done the same thing. So it makes me wonder, it's like, you've already made a controller with that kind of design, where you know that it's a good turntable material. Why the fuck didn't they use that on the lightning caps? I don't know. Like, that's why? A, that's a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's that's really odd. I didn't know that the, the KPC was like that. <laughs> oh, look, the, the KPC's super rare. Like, very few people own one out of Japan. So, you know, it's not really a very good representation. That being said, have you seen the Lightning one? What do you think of that? Uh, well, I've heard that it has a Lightning turntable module. I don't know what the fuck that means or something like that. But uh, apparently it makes scratching feel like Lightning. Uh, I, I'm basing that 100% off of the stream that Dolce did advertising it where so, he got, like, almost his arcade PB on Beachside Bunny, like, immediately. And he full so, comboed it, which was nuts. I mean, yeah, full combos were there. He does that shit all the time. But, like, mm. the score, like, that, the, the one thing that happened when Lightning, like, came out was, like, people, like, destroyed Scratch songs because it's just, like, somehow it just feels better to score on. So if they made, like, that controller specifically, like, feel better for scratching then like that's that's hype that's cool i i mean i've literally never played on one i've never touched one i've never really seen one so i can't really give any meaning obviously with the cab it's not really there's not much incentive for you to actually go and get one either because oh of course i'm, I'm <laughs> never gonna stray away from this cab so <laughs> yeah when did you get but, your yeah. cab actually I, I, this is the one thing that i didn't ever ask like when did you get it and do you know where it came from uh funnily enough uh it came from NorCal. So I, I actually had it shipped from Seattle. Uh, I would played on this exact same cab years and years and years ago on one of my first trips to NorCal. 
a friend of ours at the time actually owned this cab. He owned this cab. He sold it to uh, Kevin DDR, somebody up north. It might be Kevin DDR. Uh, I don't know for sure. But uh, it was. It was. It was 100% him. Uh, he sold it to me. So, yeah. So, it was at our friend in NorCal, sold it to Kevin DDR, who sold it to me. Wow. Now so it's right here. Let's exchange a couple of hands. How long have you owned it for now? Uh, I got it like. Probably a year before lockdown. Uh, at the time, for, so for a significant <laughs> amount of... Yeah, 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 you know, honestly. Yeah, so for, I want to say, like, seven to eight months, I actually had it at a friend's house. So, uh, Seth, Happy Feet. Oh, no way, you had it at Happy Feet? Yes, I, I had it at his house. So, because I didn't have space in my house, hmm. so I made the space... And then moved the cab into my house, and then like three months later, lockdown happened. So, and then you were you were alone and intimate with that cab for, for the best. Yeah, of the well, shit, that explains a lot of the scores. <laughs> yeah, no, I I actually think that uh, lockdown probably did make me a little better at 2DX. I mean, on, on top of the fact that like I have a cab right here. I mean, I, number one, you can't leave you can't leave your house. Number yeah. two, like. For a while, I couldn't even have any company, right? Mm. And the cab's right here. You know, I go to work, I come back, and, you know, what the hell else am I going to do? Am I going to play... I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on this cab over here and play BMS or Infinitas, or I'm going to play Escape from Tarkov, so it's a 50-50. <laughs> right? Literally a coin flip. Um, right. I've also been playing ITG, too, but that's sort of a side thing I just do for exercise. Yeah, no, it's the same thing with me and DDR. Like, I go out and play DDR for the same reason. Um, yeah. That being said, uh, do, you, do you reckon that the cabs motivated you more or less to play? I'm curious. I would almost say it hasn't changed. Yeah, because you were already playing quite a bit, weren't you? Like, even before yeah. you got the cab. So, yeah, <laughs> so all it did really was it motivated me to invest more in Infinitas, number one, mm -hmm. and also try, try BMS more. I didn't really... I did, I mean, of course I've had on and off stints with BMS, like, prior, but, like, I feel like I didn't really, really, really go into it until lockdown, mm. and I was trying to, like, you know, lamp folders and shit, so. Damn, I can't, that was... I can't even think of that shit, that's crazy. <laughs> um, what, what do you reckon of BMS and 2DX? Because you remember how, like, back a while ago we were sort of saying, oh, you need it to sort of progress or get better at the dead shit. In 2DX, is that still yeah. the case? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Still, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. If you want to be like a top ranker, like I think that, and I, I Mikalo said this on a stream uh, a while back, but and I, I agree. Maybe he set the standard a little too low, but like he said that if you want to be like a ranker, you should probably be like BMS, like Insane Ten Dan, at least. Yeah, no, that that would make a lot of sense, which is nuts. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, th there was one thing I actually discussed, which was, like, the the wall. Because I remember talking to you a while back. I think, I'm trying to remember the year. It was during, oh, God, I think it was Copula. Remember how you told me to send a message to Dolce in Super Chat? Yeah. Okay. And you were talking about, like, this wall that you'd hit, where I can't remember what it was. But you made me translate out this message for you and then super chatted to Dolce. Because it was him and Mitsuba playing at his house, right? And you're like, oh, can you ask him this question for me? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember specifically how you worded it, but it was, it was along the lines of like, you know, how do you overcome like walls in 2DX or something like that? Yeah. Like, along those yeah, lines, okay. like, you know, when, when you've got this, this big hurdle that you've been struggling to overcome for a long time, and then, remember how he took, like, an hour out to talk about it? Yeah, I remember that, actually. In Japanese? That was... And, and yeah. I just, just love how, like, people started talking about Dolce Shiki. He's like, what the, what the hell's Dolce Shiki? <laughs> Didn't even know, right, exactly. what, you know the technique that is it was based off him. Um, right. So, I mean, obviously, now you're kind of over that wall to a degree, right? Like, to a degree, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to do one of those, like, interviewer things and ask, what, what happened, man? Like... How did you get over that? Genuinely. Uh, like... 
I'm trying to think, like, get over, like, walls? Well, the, the wall during Copula, because you were hitting a really frustrating point, I remember. This is, this is around the time where everyone was starting to talk about, like, horizontal reading and... Uh, the, the way you were hitting the keys, I remember you and Justin were talking about that like a heap back yeah. then, and yeah, yeah, there was sort of this um, really frustrating point you hit, which you've obviously overcome. Like, what do you have any idea? Like, what you, what you did? To uh, that? I focused. So at the end of the day, I think what I did was I focused more on timing visually. I actually think this is like a big key thing. Yeah. I think that's, like, really, really big, and I think that, uh, you can, uh, basically, you can, it, it allows you to time more, like, precisely yeah. than if you were to go, like, by audio, and I think that at the time, I was trying too hard to time by audio, hmm. because you're kind of letting the game guide you in a way if you time visually. So... And you kind of see that this is almost the meta in a way when you look at rankers and you see that, you know, most of them are reading, like, super freaking fast, right? I wanted to ask That's... about that as well, actually. Yeah. Why, why the fuck has it gone from, like, you know, like a 270 grade number average to, like, you talk reading a 220? Like, what the, what the yeah. fuck happened there? Like, why has there been such a drastic shift? Oh, two, two things. Uh, one of them being... Uh, lightning and 120 hertz, like, you read faster. That's just it. Like, a 270 green number on 60 hertz is probably like a 260 to 250 on two, on 120. That's just the way it is. So that, that's thing one. Mm -hmm. Thing two is, I think that, like, recent rankers like Yutaka and like Wello have sort of shown people that, like, if you force yourself to read faster than what I was literally just talking about in terms of timing things visually becomes easier. It actually almost forces you to do it. And does that happen with you as well? Oh uh, yeah, actually. Uh, when I, when I was in lockdown, I had my green number down from like, so what, before lockdown, uh, heroic verse lightning cabs, I was reading like two seventy, two seventy five maybe. Yeah. Uh, just before lockdown ended, I was reading at 240. Wow. And I've I've erased my green numbers since because I found out that there's huge monitor differences between, you know, what I have at my house and a lightning cab. So I'm sort of, I'm raising it back up so I can find a comfortable spot, at which point I'll start, you know, speeding it up again. I still think that's important. But, yeah, I, I, I after, you know, having been there, having gone and you know started reading faster and faster and faster i could totally see the benefits and i think it's really that i i understand why people like you talk and play like that now yeah because because when you look at it from my perspective where most people played from like 270 green number you just see that speed and you go how, how does anyone read that and process it and time it properly at that point like it's absolutely insane to watch it but so so mm -hmm. what you're saying is it's forcing people to be more visual if it one hundred percent forces you to be more visual, I mean, if you could, if you could read at that speed and you see the note, and you process that note, you're probably going to get a P grade. Like, it, like so. First off, this also assumes that you have like innate timing ability, right? So there is a, a degree of you know audio timing and you know feeling general feeling and timing, mm -hmm. but like once you get that like down pat and you start reading faster you don't have a lot of time to process the note, and I actually think that that takes more of the human elements out of timing, which is what you want. That's how people, like, that's how you talk against things, like, you know, max minus, like, what, 30 or something on pendulums, right? Because, you know, you've got this dense-ass stream, yeah. but if you're reading at, you know, 220 green number, you see each chord individually, more or less, you're going to get a P grade on almost all of them, right? <laughs> like, that's just how it works. I don't know. Like, obviously it's not this simple. Like, you're not just going to, you know, you're not just going to lower your green number down to 210 and you're going to be a god. Of course, there's <laughs> a lot of talent involved and, like, a lot of, like, a lot of, you know, technique and other things that come with it. But, like, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. Oh. You're 100% forced to read, to time more visually and it makes you 
more accurate overall. Damn. Mind blown. Because, yeah, like, I, <laughs> you know, you, you watch these things, but you never really think about why. And it, mm. it is good to actually have someone sit and explain or, or walk you through that, that visual part. And I was actually talking to someone about it uh, a couple of days ago where he's messing around currently with, like, green number and white number and stuff. And he said, yeah, uh-huh. like, lowering the white number um, and then having a higher green number, he said, you know, it, it sort of... How, how did he put it? It's like it's laser-focused on the chords that are coming down or the notes that are coming down. So you've mm. got to react to them quicker. But at the same time, you also said, I also feel way more tired playing, though. Like, did you notice that when you do a lower green number, you're getting sort of gassed out a bit quicker? Not at all. Okay, did you hear that? I, I think Discord didn't... Okay, no, I said no. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, saw your, I saw your face, move. I thought you were just, like, weirded out by that question. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> I, I said no, and then, like, I saw... I didn't see the fucking rectangle light up, so, okay. But, yeah, no, not at all. Not not even a little bit. Really? Wow. Okay, so you, yeah, you've just 100%. visually adjusted, I guess, to, to just seeing the notes at that speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Here's an interesting question, though. Would you play a new chart at that sort of speed? So if you play uh, a new... If that was my reading speed at the time, yes. Wow, damn, dude. Because, yeah, like, you know... I don't... I typically don't stray away from a green number when I, like, settle in on it. Typically, when I do change my green number, that's sort of like a like a drastic event sort of thing <laughs> where I plan it out and I think of how much I want to do it. And then, you know, it's a period of dealing with it and adjusting to it and then sticking with it, like, almost no matter what. I don't know how smart that is. That's just sort of the process I've been doing. Because remember how we were like going super meta back in Sparta? And it was like, oh, this song's 200 BPM, so we're going to lower the green number by like two or three points. Or, you know, oh, we'll, we'll, sorry, we'll raise it two or three points. Or we'll lower it if it's like a slower song. Like, d- yeah. does that stuff still apply? Or do you just literally keep it at the same number now? I personally keep it at the same number, but I do think that uh, at the, I guess, theoretical limit, of reading speed, uh, it may be a good idea to warm up with a slightly lower green number. I watched Yutaka do this. Yeah. Uh, he warms up with a green number of about five points higher than where he wants to be. Okay. And he'll play some tens and elevens and stuff, and then he'll slowly, you know, bring it down to, I guess, whatever he feels comfortable with at the time. I don't know how uh, strict he is with it. Uh, I think that if you're going to make any sort of, you know, per session green number change, I think that doing it to warm up is the only time. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go back after you're already warm, I guess. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I mean, right, because, like, it's just going to mess you up visually. Like, I think that it's just a really sensitive thing to mess around with because if you, you know screw with it too much, then you're not going to have, you know, a comfort zone, and you're not going to be able to really visually find the window, and it's kind of it's like sort a, of... It's like people that mess with Offset. Like, I've had a few people ask me about Offset, and I'm like, dude, just, just find one, never touch it again. Just as soon as it's comfortable, leave it, because you don't want to be messing with that shit all the time. I agree with that up, in, up to the point where if you change your green number... Let's say you read faster. Yeah. You're going to be hitting more slows. Go down an offset. That's fine. Slightly. I don't think that's so. This is another thing <laughs> that I, I've, we, I've learned quite a lot about offset yeah. since probably the last time we've talked. Oh, of course. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks to actually Alex in chat right now. Um, hmm. So I, I think you knew about this actually. I feel like I was just somebody who either didn't understand what offset really did or just didn't know but it's 100 percent visual has nothing to do with audio yeah yeah right i didn't know that initially so that changes a lot of stuff do you know like, why i figured it out though because did you ever watch my old sparta videos playing with jdr uh yes yeah notice how the the, the taps were on sync and i was like yeah. but hang on i'm playing on like minus 0.7 and he's playing on like plus 1.7 and i was like there's, mm-hmm. there's no way we could be playing like that if the, it changed the audio sync. There's no way. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it's it's 100% visual. Yeah. So that being said, I actually think that it plays a key part 
in your overall settings, and that should be considered. Mm. So, like, if you... Let, I mean, let's say, you know, you want to read slower, you want to raise your green number to some number, you can also raise your offset to sort of compensate for that change. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think you should force yourself to a single offset number, no matter what your settings are. So, like, if you want to slowly, you know, decrease your green number lower and lower and lower and lower, it may also be a good idea for you to lower your offset, too. Like, that just sort of goes hand in hand in my mind. There will be a degree of you adjusting to the to the new green number, the faster green number, at which point you'll probably end up hitting slightly faster again, where you could sort of go back up. But I think it's a general downward trend alongside green number is probably a good idea. So that's if you're really trying to reduce the green number drastically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, you would, I, I did it gradually, right? So I didn't just go from, you know, 270 just to 240 straight up. Like it was like, uh, you know, I started right down there. <laughs> Let's yeah, I just, just boom, go down like 30 points. You're just going to be sitting there like, what the, what the hell is going on? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. So like, I, I think I started like 255 because that's what I just felt was comfortable on this monitor. And then it was like 253, 251. 248, 245, 243, 240. And, like, my offset also went down, like, alongside it. Mm. But, yeah, I, I think that is a good idea. I think that that's something that should be considered. People should not be afraid to mess around with it. Like, oh, I changed I changed up some stuff. Now I'm hitting fast. Do I just deal with that? No. Raise your offset. Now I'm hitting slow. Don't deal with that. Just lower your offset. Just anything to make the window more comfortable to you because if you if you have to force yourself to either drag or you know rush to hit the window you're making the game hard yeah i, I yes. get you on that front the, yeah. the only reason and and here's one thing that i did want to point out or consider the only reason why i'm iffy doing it is mm -hmm. because if you play other music games Okay. Where you can't adjust the offset. So I remember, like, yeah. back back when I was getting back into Infinitas, right? Um, uh -huh. I had a pretty low offset. And then when I went to the arcade to play DDR, I was like, holy fuck, this timing window's early. And, you know, DDR is like, let's be honest, DDR has a pretty jank window. And that's the thing, because you look at me and you're like, what the fuck, the window's late, right? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, the window was, like, disgustingly early, because I was so used to that offset that I'd set, that was like super duper low in 2DX, then when I went to the arcade and played DDR, I was like, I can't find this window. It's way too fucking early. Right? It's so pretty I, interesting. So I got scared of changing my offset for that reason. Because I was like, if I shift my offset too much in D, uh, 2DX, I'm not going to be able to find the window every time I go and play DDR. That's interesting. I feel like there's never really going to be like... I think that the differences between music games, yeah, generally speaking, and you know how notes scroll, mm. I think that that sort of offsets, pun not intended, like how. So if you're hitting super late in 2DX visually, I think that if you were to go to DDR, play DDR, note it's it, first off, you know, four gigantic arrows, the notes are coming up. I don't think anything about 2DX is going to be in your head. It's not for me, at least. I think, I, I think it affects you more if you're a very visual player, because I've come to realize, like, I'm super duper visual, right? Yeah. Like, okay. I, I, people would turn the sound off while I was playing, and it just, it just wouldn't matter to me. I'd just keep playing. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, like, it, it just, I think it depends. If you are super visual like me, like, that's, that's the only worry I have with Offset, which is how's it going to impact on other games that I'm playing? <laughs> But I mean, obviously, if you're you're two DX chat and that's that's you know your day in day out. I mean, breakfast I, after dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do also time pretty visually, and I I think generally speaking, if you're playing any music game, I think timing visually is simply the way to go. You yeah. should also time by audio as well, and you know have some sort of internal metronome going. But like visually like the game is helping you in a way but I, I do the same thing for like itg i do the same thing for ddr i do the same thing for like voltex and maybe it would affect you more in voltex if it has like slightly more similarities but i i have not experienced that personally so i don't think that's a concern you should be worried about yeah 
because uh, I mean, that was just one thing that personally hit me and i was thinking i wonder mm. how much this impacts other people when they're playing yeah because that that's the other reason this is gonna be really upsetting but that's also why i stopped playing infinitas because at the time there was a big it's a big ddr tournament coming up i was like well better focus on ddr we'll put tdx on the side wow <laughs> <laughs> when it became a ddr i said so yeah yeah what a shame I know. What a, what a shame <laughs> indeed. Um, now you're back, kind of, so. Oh, kind of, kind of. Um, and that, that's actually another thing I wanted to touch on, because, I mean, another thing I've noticed since, obviously, back 2014 till now, obviously, there's an absolute metric ton of people streaming 2DX now. And the one thing that I've noticed is that they will go a solid hour trying to beat the AR for something. Uh, do, are you doing a similar sort of thing nowadays where you're playing something non-stop to get it? Um, so you're talking about Yutaka and like KKM and people like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, um, Taka S as well. He, he's pretty criminal doing it. He'll reset right, it like right. three times. Um, I simply think they're at a different... They're playing a different game. Hmm. That's like that's just it. Uh, they're trying to push world records, which are crazy and like obviously like things that haven't really that didn't people did not think that scores like that were really possible prior to you know them doing it no. and uh did you expect to you see know, stuff that dense going down into the 20s i didn't i thought that was impossible <laughs> like actually I, I i feel like the expectations i guess that I had for, you know, how high scores can go, got completely blown out of the water come, like, cannonballers. That's when, like, people like Macau D were starting to, like, really, you know, come onto the scene, and KKM as well, and Utaka. Uh, I think that when they came around, like, the game kind of changed, simply put. Like, you, you had... I mean, we actually, I think we spoke about this at some point, mm. about uh, how world records weren't really changing for a long time. Yeah. Like, someone beat a world record, that was, like, a big deal. Like, an all-time world record. And now it's, like, you know, a weekly occurrence on 12s only, right? If you were to include the whole game, I'm sure it's a daily occurrence, if not multiple times a day. And ever since, you know, I've started, you know, seeing, you know, like, the cannonballers, like, Rootage and then Heroic Verse, people maxing 10s, people maxing 11s, and, and Mosaic, right? Like, at this point, I, I am not skeptical of what people can do. Yeah. <laughs> like, people getting sub-100 on May, uh, things that Utah has done on, like, 12s, and KKM, I'm curious, like, do you reckon KKM will catch and take over Utaka, or do you reckon he's too far ahead at the moment? Because uh, he just came back recently, right? So Yeah, I think he's talented enough. Uh, I think it Utaka might be ahead right now, but like things can change. And once again, these people are playing a different game. Like, they're beating, like a max minus like 10 score on a 12 to like max minus eight. Okay. That's one song. <laughs> like, so they have that battle and they have that battle on every freaking song. Right. Yeah. So I don't even think it's a matter of who's a better player. I think it's like, what are they going to fight for? <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that, you know, KKM and Yutaka are probably equally as talented. You know, you could argue probably, you know, Tak S, Dolce, you know, a few other players, Mikamo, probably equally as talented as well. I mean, I mean they're great players, but when it comes to overall world records held at the moment, it's it's Yutaka at the moment, isn't it? Uh, I think so. But, like, so I, I, the, my most recent Japan trip that I had before COVID, I met Yutaka. And I watched him play. Yeah. And at the time, he was trying to get the world record for double A. And like, what is the record? Just to disgust me even more, what is the current record? Uh, I'd have to look it up. I think it's like 
Max minus like 15. I was gonna say, remember, remember when like max minus 40 was disgusting? It was like, dude, no one's gonna beat that. No, exactly, right? <laughs> like, oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> it really is crazy. Like, so the, the things that people have done. It's down to 15 now. Yeah, 15. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's Utah, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Yeah, like. And then you have people like Macau D getting like less than ten grades on broken, right? Like, which is insane. It's like, how do you hit that many notes that accurately? It just it doesn't make any sense. Like, exactly, it's crazy. Like, because uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think. Because I mean, when it comes to scoring to that level, I mean, you've got scores in that range for like tens and elevens, right? Yeah. How hard did you have to work for those? Like, relatively. Ah, uh, so. Sometimes they're one-offs. Uh, actually, more often than not, I think they're usually one-offs. It's not like three or four attempts. I don't try to grind that hard on 10s and 11s. So, like, for instance, I posted... Uh, like, okay, a couple days ago, I played Finitas. I got max minus 6 on Harmony and Lovely. That was a single try. Uh, line for Ruin, max minus 9. That was a single try. Um, I, I went, to, went to the arcade, like played lightning model yesterday 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 yeah mm. uh sell out max minus four i played it once i got like 26 restarted it again and i got four uh oh, that pop team epic score was just a one shot like it's uh, a lot of the times because i i think that's you know the nature of 10s and 11s almost when you get really comfortable with the window you could i i mean i could do that right like it's I do. I do still think. I, I remember way back in the day, you always said that like one of the strongest points about like me as a player is how consistent I am. I still think that's true. Oh yeah. And I think that's why I'm able to do that kind of stuff. But like, can I do that on like double A? No. Like, <laughs> my PB on double A, I think is like thirty five, and I have not got thirty five again. <laughs> Was that on Infinitus? I think I remember the stream when you got it. I didn't get it on stream, so I got uh. 40 something on stream i ended up raising it by like almost 10 points again off stream oh my god man yeah because i remember yeah. when you broke i think it was like 36 30 or 36 20 around there 30 it was 36 24 that i got on video and then i got 36 35 uh like a month later oh see when, when you're reaching this level of scores though and, and this was something that mm -hmm. i pointed out like are, are you still in order to stay at that sort of level hitting what 98s 99s on 12s uh -huh. yeah are you playing them regularly, like, every session? Like, you'll just have, alright, this is 12's hour, like, you just rip your shirt off and go? Like... <laughs> uh, like, playing just 12s? Yeah. I play almost exclusively 12s for the majority of all of my sessions. Jeez. Damn. Like, that's... I, I don't think that's... I think it would be abnormal if I focused on 11s. Like, if I'm focusing on 11s and 10s, I'm, like, not feeling it that day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, it'll be ar the arcade and I'm forced to, right? But even then, like, I'll go to step up sometimes and I'll just, like, keep going. <laughs> Jeez, man. Do you ever just sort of gas out in a session? Like, when you're going that hard, do you just sort of hit a point where you're like, no, I can't keep going? Because I mean, me being the old man that I am, like, as soon as I hit that two-hour mark, it's, it's bedtime, man. I'm out. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, but I feel like when I gas out, I could still... I could still do 10s and 11s, probably, but, like, just not, like, hard 12s. So, the other day, actually, yesterday, not the other day, yesterday, I played for five uninterrupted hours on a lightning cap, and at, at least four hours of that was uninterrupted time held 12s the whole time. I tried, like, Mare, I tried, like, like real, like, hard 12s, Reflect Much and Daria, like, the, the whole nine yards, and... Like the three and a half to four hour mark is when I started feeling okay. My right hand like actually is not able to move that much at this point, so I should probably stop. <laughs> so I went down to tens and it was like okay, but uh, yeah, at that point, yeah, I do guess out, but it takes it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's stamina. That's that's nuts, actually, because yeah, like yeah, that's so so that's that's attributed to just you know the BMS gains. Obviously, uh, partially, partially the BMS gains, but part of it's also like tech, right? Like if you mm. if your tech is really good, 
and you're hitting keys like efficiently and you're not you know being like hitting being too strong or like hitting too hard it's pretty low impact is what Justin so, said back in 2015 still relevant? You know how we're talking about the, the tapping technique thing? Yeah? 100,000%. He was uh, totally right about that. I can tell you for a fact that every top ranker does it, and they either realize it or they don't. It's, it's uh, the, there it's is, the bounce technique, right? There is, there is a correct way to hit the keys. Yes. And it is like that bouncing sort of deal. 100%. Yeah, because I, I sort of, when I heard that, I was like, there's a lot of validity to it. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, but he could also just be talking shit. Like, I don't, I don't know at this point. I wanted to, like, you know, find out, like, did it still hold true? Or is it like, you know, a phase where you're like, okay, I'm going to focus on this. And they're like, nah, it's crap. But yeah. Because well, wow. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what it is, is you don't want to have, like, your finger contacting the key physically for longer than you need it to. Simply put, so like you press the key. If you stick your finger there, you're just gonna make your hand hurt. Yeah. Like your your force goes from pressing the key to holding the key down, and that is like almost like a different kind of like force and a different kind of pressure on your hand. Yeah. Like it actually does make sense to me. Like. You're basically minimizing how long each finger's on each key, and it lets you stream faster, and it makes you less tense. Yeah, the only exception to that is bloody charge notes, where you, you throw that out the window and then have to hold the key down. So you. Oh yeah, <laughs> but like that's just that... to what you do. exactly. Well, the thing <laughs> is, like with that, you're holding it down for like a long time, like yeah. like, and you're not doing that with every other key, right? It's that that's a little different, but yeah, obviously yeah. it's. No, yeah. that, that's the one thing, because, yeah. like, I always thought I'd bounce, but then he was telling me, no, you don't bounce enough. And yeah. I was just like, fuck yeah. you, Justin, but, you know. like <laughs> <laughs> Right, 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 right. Yeah, he didn't, like, do the best job of explaining it all the time, but, like, when I finally understood it, like, no, yeah. he was 100,000% right, and, like, you look at any top ranker. Man, that's how they hit they, it. That's how they hit it. That's, that's just how it is. Ugh. Damn, yeah, because that, uh, that was just one thing where I was like, yeah, is it something that will apply the whole way through, or as things get more dense, is it going to get, you know, to a point where that might change? But yeah, nah, fair enough that that's all right. Um, I'm just going to go back a little bit back to when you were talking about at the arcade playing for five hours. Um, is it busier or lighter at PHM now? Because back when you were playing a while ago, you, you could barely get a session in because it was so freaking busy. Uh, it's still, it's still pretty busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I have to go at like specific times. It's, it, it honestly is less busy. Mm. Uh, but there are still times where I can't really go. Like this particular arena period, I definitely had some, you know, times where I see like, oh, my rivals are literally in arenas right now. I want to play so bad. And there's like a five man line, and I'm not gonna play arena when I'm Damn, cold. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's no way. Yeah, you're not gonna race exactly. The... So there's still been times like that, but like, I mean, obviously it's an arcade; you can't really help it. But no, no, of course, yeah. PHM, PHM is one of the more high traffic round ones in SoCal. It's yeah. so like the yesterday when I played for five hours straight, it was actually Lakewood. Was the PHM? Yeah. It's Lakewood got a lightning as well now. He's got two. Damn, man. Because I, I remember it, the, the, the old tier list. PHM was there, Lakewood was there, and then you had that other shitty place, which I can't remember. Moreno <laughs> Valley. <laughs> <laughs> that machine was like a do not go there. That, that thing's cursed, man. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Did they, did they get a lightning cab as well, or is it just those two locations? Uh, so PHM has two lightning cabs. Uh, Lakewood has two lightning cabs. Um, every... SoCal round one has at least one. Yeah. So, uh, Moreno Valley has one. There's two more that open. One in Santa Ana has one. And another one in, uh, Burbank. There you go. Burbank is actually kind of close to me. I don't know why I forgot that. Uh, they also have one. <laughs> so, what, so got, funnily enough, got now. Five Lightning Cab arcades. Yes. Ca oh my god, man. Mm. Holy crap. That, that's big. That's actually massive. Do you, do you know yeah, how many Lightning no. Cabs we have here in Australia? 
We we have we now have one Gen two cab, and people were losing their shit over it. So you know, like, wow, yeah, good Man. stuff, huh? <laughs> but oh, um, Temecula has two. I didn't know that. Yeah. Maybe I did. Yeah, Temecula is another round one that's like kind of not really SoCal. It is SoCal, but it's like far from you know real the center of SoCal. That has two. That's crazy though. So <laughs> many so many lightning cabs have been pushed out your way like that that's actually insane yeah like uh adrian said most round ones in america have at least one which is nuts and th- yeah as you said lightning's probably the best thing that happened right to oh 100 probably ever since arena is the best addition to 2dx so <laughs> yeah oh damn man that's that's insane so <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm I'm hoping we get a lightning here because what's happened is it, like, have I spoken to you about Australia and what happened? No. So you know about DDR at least though, right? Like 2018, yes. they brought that one machine in as like a loke test, and then it made back all the revenue within like two months. Sheesh. And then they're like, "Holy crap, uh, we need to get more of these." So now we've got like a pretty vibrant DDR scene. But in Sydney, oh, that's the, cool. but in Sydney there were these two. Um, these two Chinese players that got this dingy ass arcade that's like literally at the top of a shopping mall to bite the bullet and buy a 2DX and sound Voltex, right? And that's that's a pretty big step, right? Yeah, uh, it is. A year later, uh, they now have two Valkyrie cabs and two SD VX cabs there. They have yeah. Valkyrie cabs? They have Valkyrie cabs. Wow, not even round one has that that's crazy so and it's I, connected to emus yep there's the four fuck? there's four sound voltex machines in one location there's uh, this is one state by the way and then there's no sound voltex cabs in any other arcade location it's just this one place that bit the bullet for them what the <laughs> fuck? yeah and now that's appa- crazy so now apparently you know 2dx might be on the table for other locations but i mean no one no one knows what's going on with it but there, there is actually potential for those games to come back and, and be distributed in australia now because they've sort of opened the floodgates that's really crazy yeah <laughs> but okay apparently there's, can't... Yeah, apparently there's three valkyrie models in sydney potentially five but we don't know about all of them yet so because they're it's being really molded. surprising i know yeah How is that i can't believe that australia beat the u.s to having valkyrie caps well, Australia's had access to this the whole time. The problem is our primary distributor... This, I found this out like two years ago. Turns out our primary distributor who has access to all of this stuff fucking hates music games. And he's completely against like trying to distribute them because he's got this like internalized like vengeful spitefulness against music games. So when he put DDR out, he actually wanted it to fail. It was like, man, screw that game. But it made that much money that it's like, well, shit, now I have to invest in this. Because, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So, for ages, we were, we were completely gatekept because of that. But because DDR sort of paved the path, now there's, like, a lot of stuff that they want to bring in as a result. Like, there's a lot of stuff wow. this year that might be happening with music games. So, yeah. That's sick. Cool. Yeah, but how, how, God, fu- how funny is that, though? Like... You know, this this one random location, like this upstairs mall, got a Valkyrie cab before, you know, all the round ones in <laughs> in America. What the fuck? That's <laughs> crazy. Oh my god. Yeah. So Jesus. that's that's sort of the scene there. So we have one legit 2DX machine here now, which is in Sydney, not not in Melbourne. Wow. And How far is Sydney from you? Like three hours? It's a one hour flight. It is a eight hour drive. So, you know, if I want to <laughs> go for a long hours drive, then yeah, I can go play some 2DX. That being said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was heartbroken to find out because I was talking funnily enough to GG Snipes in the chat at the moment. Okay. I found, I found yeah. out they're running 2020 or 2520, which is just wow. Two, like, you know, for me, that's like kryptonite. I can't play on that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's just that, like, there's light. Like, you know, if, if they're playing, you know, 50, you know, 25, 50, I can probably deal with it. But 25, 20 is just like, no. You, you like, a wind blows by and all the keys will go off. <laughs> yeah, like, you could, like, basically hit the key panel and trigger, like, four of the keys, probably. 
You, you, you do one Toshi <laughs> hit of the key panel and all of them will trigger off. Yeah. All of them light up. Oh my god. Oh. Jesus. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I am sort of prospecting. Like, I spoke to, to Tom Bogan Gokun and he was like, yeah, look, 2DX might be on the cards in Melbourne at some point. And if it does come in, then, I mean, would you play it? And I, at, at the time, you know, I was sort of retired. I was like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, maybe, maybe not. I wasn't 100% sold, but... I'm sure it'll be a different story when it's actually there, too. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it probably will be. Like, and, and that's the thing, like, it was the same thing with DDR. Like, DDR came in, I was sort of like, uh, I don't know about this. Like, I'll probably play one or two rounds, but like, yeah, that's cool, and that's it. Next thing you know, it's like my regular form of exercise. I go out to the arcade like three times, or two or three times a week to play. Yeah. Wow, man! And I think that you brings up my next point. Like, are you still hanging with the boys, going out and playing together, or do you just go out on your own? I hang out with the boys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I would like go out with people. I mean, there are times where I like, you know, go go on my own to grind, but like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like, I'm a very social person. I have a very vibrant social life here, so. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Because that was, yeah, one of the, the final things that I put in that video I put out a few days ago of, you know, like, the, the big thing for me was just having those people around to motivate and keep pushing and enjoy the game with. Like, for 2DX, we don't have that in Melbourne. Like, the only two people who were playing are, like, me and Tom. And like, yeah. Tom's played, I think, a total of five games this year, and I've, I've actually played more in the last week than I think Tom's played on his cabs. So, wow. So it's Damn. It's, it's literally <laughs> on like the the scene in Melbourne's on life support. I know that in Sydney it's popping off because they've got their cab, and you know that's they've cool. Got, they've got um a lot of players there, sort of driving things. But yeah, yeah, um, it's pretty dire here. So like, I I honestly don't know if people would come back. I mean, maybe, probably, if it was a, uh, what is it, a lightning cab? I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, you, you'd probably be surprised. Like, sure, peeps, like, some people will come back, some people won't come back, but then you'll also get a bunch of new people. Like, that's just going to happen. Yeah, DDR blew up, man. Like, I'm genuinely surprised at how much DDR took off when I yeah. sort of brought all those cabs in. Um, yeah. I, I cool, just don't though. see the same thing happening for 2DX, though. Like, at least with DDR, and, and you got to admit this, like, it's got... I'd, I'd hate to use this term, but it's more generally appealing to mainstream people to get involved in it than something like 2DX, yeah. which is, like, extremely niche. Yeah, but even then, there's, there's still going to be a crowd. Like, I mean, just, like, I, I will bring PHM as an example, actually. Mm. So pre-COVID and post-COVID, uh... I would say we lost like one group of regulars, uh, about probably about three people, three or four people. Yeah. And I've seen probably about five new faces. Oh wow! Like you know, this past like month that like I don't know if you know they started playing during lockdown, waited for PHM to open back up, but. Uh, I mean, it just takes a couple of people, right? And it's so someone like, especially somewhere like, like, like Melbourne, like, there's gonna be somebody who is like, oh, there's a lightning cab now. I'm gonna go to this cab. That happens three times, and you've got like a tiny community. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, don't I, know. I do know that yeah. the, the guy who sold my cabinet to Widjo, like, he'd definitely go and play it. I think. Mm. Yeah, he'd, he'd definitely go. I mean, of course I've got to check it out. It's like... Of <laughs> even if I tried to resist, yeah, not. like, no, it got us. It's, yeah, the pool is too strong. Um, yeah. I, I, like, yeah, like, there, there are at least three people that would play it. It's just, I don't know if, like... Yeah, it's, I honestly, and this is just sort of being genuine, I just don't... I, I've got this internal fear... Because, and I spoke to Gokin about this, because back in the day, like, did I, I, I talked to you about how I used to play on, like, this rundown distorted machine. There was only, like, four or five of us that would play 2DX. But, man, those are the best damn days of playing 2DX in my life. Even if it was on a shitty machine, wrong monitor that messed up the timing, keys that didn't match, didn't fucking matter. We're just there enjoying the game. Yeah. But I think there's just, like, this internal worry that, you know, it's, it's going to bring back that, but not as good. So I'll probably play for like, you know, a month or two and then be like, yeah, okay. And then just, just sort of go like this. 
I, I think that sort of makes me hesitant about it or a bit like I don't know like have, have this negative preconception about a, a cabinet coming in I'm sort of like, feel like uh, yeah <laughs> I feel like if you go in with that expectation that's just what's gonna happen <laughs> I don't know like on the flip uh, side though that's that's also what happened with DDR I was like I'm probably gonna play this three times think this is shit and quit and now I'm like playing regularly so you know exactly like... <laughs> yeah once again you never know you really never know so uh, absolutely yeah but, yeah. yeah seriously just it's crazy, like, as I said, at the very start, just seeing how things have changed for you guys, like, going from, like, nothing to five arcades with lightning cabs. Yeah, like, I mean, if, honestly, like, SoCal has always sort of been in a good spot for 2DX relative to the rest of America. Hmm. I've always been really thankful of that, but, like, now it's probably even more so. Like, the the accessibility of 2DX all across America has been, like, hugely raised like it's so much better now thankfully mm. but i'm mean, so cal is still in like probably the best position debatably is is so cal number one if if there was like a you know ranker to come along and say i want to go to america would you say go to SoCal first absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so not just because i want to meet that guy but yeah. I mean, come on, there's five arcades that I can list that I, I could, right now, I could drive, well, not right now, because they're all closed, but, like, if they were open, I could drive to five different places that have at least one lightning cap, two of which have two. Like, yeah. a drivable distance. I know on the East oh. Coast it's not the case. <laughs> Sorry, uh, like, Izzy's just brought my dog in. I'll, I'll pick her up for you. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Is. Hello. Yeah. Oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> okay. Did you want me to come with? Are you sure? It's alright. Um, apparently she's she might have injured herself, so... Oh my gosh. Yeah. She no, didn't look very sad. No, that, that's what I thought as well, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we might have to... Uh, have a quick visit to the vet, I think, just to check that, unfortunately. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry to uh, have that sudden revelation occur, but, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I mean, it, it, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah, no, unfortunately. You, gotta, you gotta help the dog. The dog's yeah, cute. Man. Oh, it's, it's freaking adorable. <laughs> Absolutely adorable. But, hey. um, yeah, look, before we do sort of finish, and I, I, I end up driving mm -hmm. off... Um, yeah. yeah. Any other things that you want to like discuss or, or mention or anything like that? Or oh man, I don't, I don't really know. Actually, I'm not too sure. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on with me behind the scenes, but like I may wait a little bit to like talk about it. So I mean, you kind of already know. So <laughs> I was say, you know, but um. That's that's secretly just Dolce wearing a, a big white man costume the whole time. It's yeah, just, <laughs> a big facade. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah, no. But uh, I may like. So I may in the near future kind of go back to like content creation a little more, yeah. like streaming. I don't know how hardcore. I always had a problem with you know sticking with a consistent schedule. But, hmm. I mean, th things are kind of different for me now, so that may not be as hard. So, I mean, if people are interested, if you want me to stream again, I'll probably start streaming again uh, whenever I play Infinitas. Uh, I've always wanted to do other, like, sort of talk-related things, too. I know people sometimes like to hear me talk, so if you have anything you want to talk about, you know, <laughs> I still like doing that stuff. I do have more time now, so... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Fun times. I'm glad you at least took the time out tonight. Like, I know that, yeah, spur of the moment, I sort of messaged you going, hey, man, do you want to uh, <laughs> sit down and chat? But honestly, it's been really good. Sure. It's really been, been Dude, really, yeah, really it's been fun. Yeah. It's been really fun. Man. And, uh, yeah. No, th there were a few other things that I would have liked to have chatted about, but yeah, obviously, got to run off, but... 
um it's yeah, fine. No, thanks heaps man really appreciate you coming on and, and having a chat for and sure thanks to all the people in the live chat who've come along to listen um i'll definitely yeah, put a vote up this on on youtube for anyone who wants to watch it and heck yeah yeah no just we'll keep in touch keep keep being the amazing player that you are the, the amazing yeah. guy that you are and uh yeah no it's, it's been real man thanks heaps yeah thank you yeah see you later oh, good so, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll cut it there. I'd, I'd do a massive yeah. outro, but unfortunately, don't have time. So, yeah. No, thanks, <laughs> thanks, everyone. And hopefully, yeah, we get to do other good stuff like this in the future. For sure. All right. Peace out, man. Have a good one. See you later. You too. Have a good day. Almost a night. <laughs>